Hi, in this video I want to introduce you to the concept of endpoint security groups, so ESGs. They make Cisco ACI segmentation designs and configurations easier. ESG is a broad topic, so we will cover it in two separate videos. In this first part, I will briefly explain ESGs and their benefits, and additionally, I will demonstrate the first use case of building and matching with ESG. In the next part, part 2, I will showcase how to easily perform route leaking with ESGs. Alright, before moving to use case demos, let's first briefly discuss what Endpoint Security Group is. I think we all agree that the easiest way to manage endpoints with common security requirements is to put them into groups and control communication between them. But if you look at network-centric deployments today, some customers are using EPG to reflect old VLAN-based segmentation, so there are challenges if you need more granularity. You may need to achieve this granularity by segmenting the same bridge domain for different EPGs, so single BD across multiple EPGs. However, there might be another concern here. What if multiple subnets need to share the same security rules? Ok, what we can do is we can add these subnets under the same bridge domain and use this BD across different EPGs. The concern here is that we can expand our broadcast domain, which might raise another security concern. And now, to address these challenges, Cisco introduced the concept of endpoint security groups. They break the earlier concept of tight coupling of forwarding and security. Now, forwarding happens on the EPG slash BD level and security enforcement is done on the ESG level. Right? This way we get flexible security grouping across multiple BDs. Let's move on. There are properties and advantages of ESGs other than decoupling networking from security and spanning multiple BDs. Now, to assign endpoints to ESG, we may use various selectors. We can use tag selectors, which are used to classify ranges of IPs, specific IP, specific MAC addresses, VMM endpoints or existing starting endpoints. We can also classify the entire EPG to an ESG using a concept of an EPG selector. The last option and VMM endpoint MAC are the most commonly used actually, that's why we will see them in action in the following demo. Both of these options are available in ACI starting from the version of 5.2.1. There is also a service EPG selector used to map service EPG to ESG. This is however related to the topic of service graphs and as the last selector it got introduced in uh, version 5.2.4. For communication between different ESGs, we use the very same contract constructs we have used in ACI since inception. Therefore, we have several supported relationships like ESG to ESG, ESG to external EPG, so L3 out EPG, ESG to VZN, and also ESG to inbound EPG. However, remember that configuring a contract between ESG and any other EPG not mentioned in green in this slide is not supported. Using ESGs allow us to do things like VRF route leaking in a much more intuitive manner, which we will see in the next video. Last but not least, it allows easy migration from network-centric to application-oriented designs, which also relates to brownfield migrations. Alright, so let's move on. In this section, I'm going to guide you through how to build endpoint security groups and how to assign endpoints to them using the most common classification methods. But first, let me introduce you to the scenario topology. In my ACA fabric, I'm hosting tenant Initech, which has two VRFs, V1 and V2. Let me start with the second VRF, where two bridge domains reside. BDA with that subnet, which is referenced by EPGA, and BDB, with its subnet referenced by EPGB. I use VMM integration and I have two virtual machines assigned to EPGA and also to EPGB. These are the details of these endpoints. In VRF1 I have another bridge domain BDC with yet another subnet configured. 
This BD is referenced by EPGC with two virtual endpoints reported by the VMM integration. For better readability, in the VM name we have a clear indication to which EPG it belongs to. Before I move to the first configuration step of ESG building and magic, let me switch to a live deployment and verify that configuration. Let me go to tenants and to the initech tenant. In this tenant, I have application profile already created. For our demo purposes, I name it ESG demo. So let's preview what's configured inside. Let's go to the topology of the application profile. Let me zoom it in a bit. All right. There are already three EPGs with VMM domain association. EPG A is associated with BDA1924 V2 VRF. EPG B is associated with BDB10 in uh, V2 VRF and EPG C with BDC172 in VRF1. As you see in the canvas, there are no contracts configured between those EPGs. Now, let me show you endpoints reported for each of the EPG. In summary, we should have six of them, two endpoints per each EPG. And indeed, in the EPG A, I do see A1 and A2 VMs. For EPG B, I do have B1 and B2 reported. And C1 and C2 reported for EPG C. Now, let's build the first ESG. In this case, not only do I want to span across two different bridge domains, but I also want to be selective on VMs that are going to be matched to this ESG. Specifically, I would like to match A1 and B1 to my new security group. To achieve that, I will use the VMM endpoint MAC policy tag. To be very specific, I'm gonna match it by VM name. When I do that, I will be able to ping between VM A1 and B1 which is not possible as of now because I don't have any contracts in place. So let me quickly verify that. Let me ping 10, 6, 1, 10, which is B1. And this is not working. All right, let's move back to APIC. Go to endpoint security groups. Right click and launch the wizard. The wizard is going to ask me some basic information. First, I give it a name. Secondly, because this is a VRF concept, not a BD concept, I, I select respective VRF, which is V2 in our scenario. Let's hit next. To classify endpoints into my new ESG, I will use a tag selector, which consists of key value pairs known as tags. Specifically, I will use the VMM MAC endpoint tag to identify the source of information, which is the VM name learned through VMM. As you see in the contextual help, I got the key I must use for this specific configuration. Let me copy it. Now, to assign all VMs in the VRF whose names end with the number 1, so A1 and B1, I need to provide a specific value. There are different operators I could use for this, but in my case, the most suited one is a regular expression of one and a dollar sign. The dollar sign matches the end of the string. Okay, let's hit next. And in the advanced tab, we can configure additional options like intra ESG isolation or preferred group membership, which I skip as this is not the part of this video. Let's click finish. Now, has anything happened already? Let me go to my ESG and I cannot find any client endpoints or tag selectors associated with this ESG. Actually, the reason why I cannot find any client endpoints or tag selectors for this ESG is that I need to enable the allow micro segmentation option under VMM association when using VMM policy tags. Since we use a VMware VDS switch, a private VLAN with an isolated port must be set up on that switch. 
This ensures that traffic is not switched on the VDS level, but instead forwarded to the Cisco ACI leaf switch every single time. Without this configuration, we have only one VLAN ID present on the virtual switch. So let's add this configuration under VMM domains for EPGA and EPGB as well. Let me double click on that. And let's tick allow micro segmentation setting. All right. The same for the EPGP. Let me switch to the vCenter. And on the VMware side, we see that port groups for EPG A and B are running private VLANs now, so the traffic is not switched locally. Let's now verify if the classification is working correctly. At the ESG level, I can see client endpoints now with information about base EPG and policy tags used for matching. We also can observe that the traffic between A1 and B1 is functioning properly. Both endpoints are now classified as members of the same ESG, allowing them to communicate with each other. Additionally, I see automatically populated read-only VMM MAC policy tags. Based on this information retrieved from VMM integration, APIC maps specific policy tags to each endpoint. So we have matching tag selector over here. And we see this populated for ones which are already classified. So A1 and B1. And now here's a question. Can A1 and A2 still communicate with each other? The answer is no, they can't but only because we enabled a micro-segmentation on the EPG VMM domain level. So in order to keep this communication allowed, we could configure intra-EPG contract. Now let's move to a second scenario from this demo, where I will match two outstanding VMs, A2 and B2, into new ESG. And for that I'm going to use another flavor of VMM endpoint tag that uses VMware tag. These tags need to be configured on the VMware side. They have nothing to do with the ACI configuration. So when I go to vCenter and preview my VMs, so let's preview A2 for example, in the summary page, there's a section with tags. In this case, I have two tags which I assigned manually. One category is owner and the second is EPG. I will classify this VM using EPG category where the value is match 2. Let's verify this for B2 as well, where the situation is exactly the same. Now let me switch to APIC and create another ESG. But before I do that, I need to do one thing. I must enable tag collection setting under my VMM domain so APIC can pull these tags from vCenter. So let me go to virtual networking, to VMware, to VCBCN, which is my VMM domain. And in the policy general tab, there is a tick enable tag collection. Let's submit. Now let's go back to our tenant and create a new ESG. Let's expand application profiles, ESG demo. All right. I give it an artificial name of ESG match to VM tag, just for clarity what I'm doing. I assign it to V2 and create a tag selector. In this case, tag key corresponds to VMware tags category. So let me put EPG here. 
then value operator equals to match to which is a value which we expect to get from VMware tag. Let's hit OK. Next. And finish. Let's preview this ESG. And indeed, it works as expected. A2 and B2 are now classified into ESG2. Now under policies, endpoint tags, we can see the matching tag selector which is used for a specific VM. For some is VM name, for some of them is VM tag, which we just configured. Let's now check whether the communication between A2 and B2 is working. It's worth remembering that we haven't configured any contract between EPG-80 and EPGB. Therefore, before classifying those endpoints into the ESG, communication didn't work. Now let's see what happens. And that works. Why? Because they are part of the very same ESG group, which is spun across different bridge domains. Now, before we move on to the next scenario, I would like to quickly show you how to assign contracts to ESGs. This works in the same way we are used to with EPGs. I have a contract which is permit all contract configured already. I will apply it between ESG1 and ESG2 for testing purposes. Keep in mind that the same contract cannot be used by EPGs and ESGs at the same time. In case it's needed, we must create a duplicate contract that refers the same set of filters. Let's expand the first ESG, right click on contracts, add provided contract, and I'm going to consume that contract from the ESG2. Now we can see that from A1, I can ping B2, which is a communication between two different ESGs. Good. Now let's move on to this next scenario in today's demo, which involves the EPG selector. In case your infrastructure is diligently segmented with EPGs, ESGs are designed to allow you to migrate your policy with just a little effort. With EPG selector, we can easily move all our endpoints to new ESG. Additionally, we inherit any contracts that are configured at the EPG level. The EPG selector is really flexible. You can use it to create both small granular groups and also larger ones that match multiple EPGs. Even if these EPGs refer to different bridge domains in the same VRF, they can still be matched to the very same ESG. In APIC, we repeat steps of creating a new ESG. Let's launch the wizard. I give it a name of ESG match 3 EPGC. I associate it with VRF1, so V1. And I go with EPG selector rather than tag selectors we used in previous examples. And let's select EPGC. That's it. And finish. Now when I expand application EPGs, I see that there is a new annotation next to EPGC, which indicates that this is entirely matched to the ESG. I see also that all EPGC endpoints are classified here into ESGC. On the operational tab in the EPG level, I see to which ESG it is actually mapped. As a bonus, let's take a look at the following scenario. What if EPGC along with BDC are part of VRF2 instead of VRF1? In this case, will the virtual machine C1 be classified to ESG1 because its name ends with 1? Or will it be classified to ESG3 because of the selector? Let's find out. First, I need to reassign ESG3 to VRF V2. So let me go to the policy of the ESG. But as you see, I cannot do this right away. First, I need to delete EPG selector because this EPG still points to VRF1, I mean EPGC. Let's expand ESG, let's go to selector section 
and let's delete this EPG selector. So let's go back on the ESG level and let's change its VRF to V2. Now on the left menu, let's expand networking section. Let's go to the bridge domain C and let's assign it to V2 as well. And as a last step, let me configure the EPG selector one more time for the ESG3. This is something that we did in the previous scenario, but now both EPGC and ESGC are part of VRF2. Now the annotation is next to the EPGC again. Is that all what I need to do? Unfortunately, no. There is still one thing left to configure. Don't forget that enabling micro-segmentation for VMM domain association is a requirement for VMM endpoint stacks. And this hasn't been configured yet for EPG3. Okay, now check this out. We see that one endpoint from this EPG is assigned to the EPGC, but another one is to the ESG1. In ESG3, there is only one connected endpoint, which is C2. In the ESG1, however, I can see additional endpoint, which is C1, because VM's name ends with 1. There you go. So clearly, the VMM tag selector takes priority over criteria of an EPG selector. To provide further context, I'm showing a table that lists the precedence order for both switch and routed traffic. This table will serve as a reference in case you need to refer back to it later. Alright, that's everything I wanted to share with you in this video. Before we ramp up, I recommend checking out the ESG chapter in the APIC Security Configuration Guide for more detailed information, guidelines and current limitations that apply for ESGs. I hope this has been informative. Thank you for watching. Cheers.